you take great care when you're buying an app to make sure it's good and it's not going to ruin your machine and does exactly what you want. HTML is the ultimate example of what you troubles you get into if you are promiscuous, right? And you are promiscuous, why? Because part of what HTML does is you have to visit other people's websites and you have to execute not your code that you wrote, other people's code. HTML, it's an interpreted system. The customers want instant gratification and you've got to get cracking. Speed is of the essence. I think the nub of what we're trying to get at is this. HTML seems to be able to tolerate your mistakes. But for those of you who know a programming language, basic C or whatever, you know they will not tolerate your mistakes. They won't interpret it for you. They won't compile a program for you unless it's correct. So how does this difference come about? If HTML is a language, it's getting executed, what is it about it that makes it easy to be tolerant? And on the face of it, yes, it's wonderful, it seems to put my errors right. Perhaps we could start off with our good old friend, the paragraph, P. And I'm going to just put a piece of text in here which says, hello, Sean. Even though I absolutely don't have to do it, nevertheless, I'm going to do it. I'm going to close off the paragraph. And then I'm going to open up another one straight away afterwards. Goodbye, Dave. And once again, we close off with a slash P. You'll all understand that this is a classic use of paragraphs. You put them in sequence. You have first paragraph, second paragraph, third paragraph, all that kind of thing. Does it mean anything? And does it look any different? And does it do any different? If I start messing about and saying, I'm not going to sequence them, I'm going to fit the second paragraph inside the first, so it's nested, as we say, it forms a hierarchy. It's a para within a para. You can see the difference. I've opened up a paragraph. I've said, hello, Sean. I've then opened up another paragraph. And I've said, this is a nest, just to hammer it home, that the inner one really is fitting inside the outer one. And then I dutifully close them both off. You might think, oh, I know what it'll do. I might get, hello, Sean, and then the phrase, this is a nest, will be tabbed in and indented. Maybe that's what it does. So I've tried this out in my own Firefox browser, and believe you me, it doesn't crash it. It just treats it exactly as if it was sequential paragraphs. There's no sign of the nesting or anything. So if we develop these a little bit further now, we could say, OK, do the P, hello, Sean, do another P, goodbye, Dave. So you're omitting the closing bit, is that right? I'm omitting the closing of the paragraphs. Is that acceptable to HTML? Yes, it is. Nothing's going to fault you for missing out end of P. And that, if you type that in, will look the same as that. It wants to put the end tags in, and obviously in some sense it does, but what's its rule? And here we go. It probably won't do what you want to do. It does what it finds convenient. And what it finds convenient is the following rule. It says, I am going to assume if you give me a second P and I'm already inside the first one, I'll just close the first one off. How would the browser cope if I sometimes put my end P's in and sometimes didn't? And the answer is it will always, as far as I know, assume that you want a sequence and that is what it will impose on you. What it comes down to is a sort of informal theorem, something like the following. If you're trying to be very clever and mend somebody's incorrect program, then the problem is that if you have a structure that can be a sequence of, or it can be a nest of, or it can be any combination, you could have a sequence of nests or a nest of sequences. But if you want to start saying they can both coexist, nesting, uh, sequencing, then you must put your end tags in if you want to be unambiguous. Otherwise, how can it be repaired? So in other words, if, they, if both possibilities are possible, 
then you can't have smart behavior because it cannot know how to repair it correctly. And what HTML is doing is it's not solving the in insoluble. It's saying I have one view of the world and I'm going to impose it on you and I am not going to try and be clever. Now that of course is a luxury that HTML has. It basically says I keep things simple. I like things to be more or less sequential with the minimum of this embedding, you know, and all that. And that's why it can get away with murder. Now, for those of you who've ever written a program and know that you compile it or even you interpret it, oh boy, it's not going to try and mend your bad program for you. Why is it that things are so much more complicated? Well, the answer is you can do more with these languages and you will want to do more. Let me just invent a little piece of pseudocode and I'll let you fill this in, in either BASIC or C or Java or whatever terms you want. Printf, hello Sean. And C programmers will know that if you want a new line at the end of that, which you do, you better put a backslash N at the end. We're going round the stuff inside this block, which is a very simple block. It's just got a single print statement in it. So what we'll get is hello Sean, hello Sean, hello Sean, hello Sean, 10 times. Then I do another loop that goes around 10 times. Goodbye Dave. New line. Close quotes. Semicolon. Let's hope this really would compile. You can all see what's going to happen. When you execute this, I'm going to get hello Sean, hello Sean, hello Sean, hello Sean, 10 times. Then goodbye Dave, goodbye Dave, goodbye Dave, goodbye Dave, 10 times. So that is what happens when you have a sequence of blocks. But by comparison, with paragraph in HTML. Can you, in programming languages, have nested blocks? You bet you can. Now, I'm going to say loop around 10 times on the following. Printf, hello Sean. But now look at what I'm going to do. I'm now not going to close off that block. I'm going to nest another loop block inside it. Goodbye Dave. Now let's make sure our brackets match. I've opened up one, I've opened up two, I've closed this one, I must close that one. I hope you can all see and understand what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to do a loop within a loop. They're nested like sort of Russian dolls, one inside the other. But the effect of this is completely different to the one I did previously. Here what's going to happen is the outermost one goes around 10 times and every time it goes around it does a hello Sean. But every time it does a hello Sean, it then goes into a nested inner loop that does 10 goodbye Daves. So for every one hello Sean I print out, I'm now getting 10 goodbye Daves. Net result, I will end up with 100 goodbye Daves interleaved between 10 hello Seans. Whereas in the earlier case, I had 20 printouts, I had 10. Hello Sean's followed by 10 goodbye days. Lots of students have said to me over the years, the C compiler is so clever, why can't it put my programs right for me? And the answer is, if you omit your end tags, how can it know whether you want this one or this one? They're both equally valid. This then is the absolute fundamental conundrum. Can you unambiguously put back the closed curly braces if users omit them? No, you can't because you've got to work out. Do they want a sequence, a nest, a nest of sequences? There's all sorts of places to put back the brackets and they have all sorts of different effects. And that is why C, Java, Basic, whatever, have to be theological and start laying down the law to you, brackets mismatch or whatever, whenever you miss them out. The reason, let's say it again, why HTML can be so tolerant is because it's so much simpler than C. It is a programming language, it is an execution environment, but it's not been built to support deeply nested hierarchical structures. So although it seems to be tolerant and although it seems to be correcting your program, you've got to remember it isn't really doing the impossible it's imposing a model on you and hoping that the visual effect of what it does is so stunning that you won't notice that it's not quite done what you hoped it would do. Someone came along, applied one of these to ImageNet and got incredible results. 
and so on and so forth. And now there's this big push and everyone's trying to get even better results and even better results.